What's going on guys? Uh, today we are talking about some QSP knives. QSP. Never heard of them. I know. It's probably what you're thinking. Most people haven't. Um, this is not a company you're probably going to see on a dealer site, you know, like a major knife dealer site or anything. Um, it seems to me that this is just one of those smaller overseas companies. They have a presence on uh, Amazon as well as eBay. And I will give you just a quick side note here. Uh, it seems to me that their prices on uh, eBay seem to be a little bit steeper, and that could just be knife flipping. And yeah, just like homes and everything else, if there's value, people flip it. So, you know, I'm, what I'm thinking is happening is some people are buying them on Amazon and just jacking the price up a couple bucks and posting them on eBay to make a few dollars on the side. Could be the case, maybe not, who knows, who cares. Uh, I'm just telling you, as a consumer, you know, you work hard for your money, definitely shop around for the best price. If you're interested in one of these knives, I would check both places and make sure you're paying the, the you know, cheapest price you can. But anyway, um, so long story short, I had a viewer tell me about this knife. This is called the Parrot. I've teased you guys uh, in a bunch of videos, my little, little pink knife, it's a little pink Parrot, and uh, it's finally time to talk about it here. So they uh, told me about that, and they were asking me if I knew anything about the company, and unfortunately I couldn't help them out. I said, no, I'd never even heard of the company. But I kind of got stuck on my head a little bit. I looked at their prices, it seemed pretty reasonable. Uh, this one sells for like $21, I think, or $20 and change. Um, the other two are in the $40 range, like $40, to $50. And uh, so I was interested. So I ended up getting three different models just to try them out. I use this one the most, like by far, way more than the other two, but I did want to include them in the video because I did carry them and use them, and I do have some opinions on those as well. So this is kind of like a triple review, um, focusing more on the Parrot, but kind of talking about the company as a whole. Like I said, it, it just seems to me it's uh, probably a, a company located in, uh, in China that is just, I don't know if they're working out of the same factory as some of the other companies or not, but they're pumping out some knives, they're selling them on uh, Amazon and eBay. So uh, yeah. This one is the Parrot's the smallest one. I do think they have another one too that I haven't tried yet. They might be making more models as time goes on because it seems like somewhat of a newer company anyway. But anyway, the middle one here, this one is the QS105. Uh, and this one I think is called the Pangolin or something along those lines. Uh, this is my favorite of the three. Right off the bat, if you're kind of interested and you want to try one of these knives, I mean, this is I think is the best value. These two are sporting 440C. Uh, again, $21 here, about $40, $45 there. This one's still in the $45, $46 range, but with D2. So that's a huge difference in steel. I know some people don't like D2, you know, but I still feel like it's definitely better in performance than, uh, than 440C, and it's been proven with actual usage. But overall, I just love the design. It's actually really comfortable. This does come in a couple different colors. I think there's an all-black version of this one. Uh, this one has kind of a stonewash finish on it. All right, this one, the green, you know, somewhat contoured uh, G10 scales. It is an open frame design. All three of these are liner locks. See the lock up there? Also show you the centering real quick. Um, just really, really comfortable, easy to use. This is uh, running on a uh, bearing system. All right, so very smooth and opening. Both of these, this one and this one, both use a, uh, a pivot bearing system. All right, these are flippers. This one here is on using some copper washers. So it's definitely uh, smoother than some folders out there, but it's nothing like these because of the bearings. But anyway, yeah, this is definitely by far my favorite. Just super, super comfortable. Just a nice, you know, somewhat affordable flipper. You know, if you're looking in the $40, $50 range, it might be something worth looking at. The D2 hasn't given me any problems with rust or anything or chipping. I've used this on a couple different types of plastic, mostly cardboard, but some plastic jugs. And I also actually cut some paracord with all three of these knives as well. And uh, yeah, no issues. I mean, the D2, it's starting to get a little bit dull now, but I definitely noticed the 440C on you know, this one, as well as the Parrot, uh, started dulling a lot quicker. Um, still very usable knives for sure, but I just, I feel like the D2 is way better. So anyway, with this one, this is the QS101. Uh, again, 440C, this is called the, I'm going to butcher this because it, it's very weird to have an S before a TH for me, but I think it is the Sthenia. It's S-T-H-E-N-I-A. Sthenia, if I'm saying that wrong, I have no idea what that means. But yeah, that's what this one is. Now, this one looked the coolest to me. You know, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh yeah, that, I'm going to like that one the most. 
And I like this one the least. I really don't like this one that much. It looks cool. And I wouldn't say it's like super uncomfortable at first, but what I've really noticed in carrying and using this is because there's a wider gap here compared to this one, let's say. You can see there's a wider gap in the frame. So when my thumb rests on here, I'm not just touching the metal liners, I'm touching the actual scales here. My, the meat of my thumb is throughout the entire width of this. But just having the tiniest bit of a wider gap in between, I really find like I'm, I'm not really touching the, the orange scales here. My finger's resting on these liners. So if I took, imagine if you took a knife that's similar to this and you took the scales off, you know, and just resting your fingers on the liners. It just, I don't know, it just feels kind of undone, unfinished. Um, there's something lacking there, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, it's, it's really, really hard to explain. It's the best way I can say it is it feels like there's no scales on this at all. Looking at it, it looks super comfortable. I like the finger choil. Uh, I like the curvature down here. And the scales themselves are, are they're really nicely done, you know? Also a layer G10, you can kind of see that those faint lines there from the contouring, uh, cham chamfering, excuse me, around the edges. I mean, there's no sharp edges or anything like that. Also a liner lock. Also the lockup on both of these, awesome. Really, really well done. All right, so no issue with any kind of blade play or anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, just that feeling right there, I don't like, all right? In addition to that, if you already noticed, but you can see this is only tipped down, right side carry, and I just hate the pocket clip. The pocket clip just doesn't match the knife at all. There's nothing black on here except for the pocket clip. Those holes in there make it look cheesy. Um, it carries okay, it carries fine. It's obviously not deep conceal or anything. I mean, there's a bunch of knife sticking up there. Um, eh, just one of those things. Just didn't like it, all right? So like initial impressions, like, oh, okay, whatever. But when you're carrying it and you're actually using it, that's when all those other thoughts start, you know, rolling through your head. Hate the pocket clip on this and just don't like how that feels back there. Um, but it is smooth, locks up great. I mean, functionality, it's there, it's fine. And if you're okay with 440C, that's cool. But I think a lot of people out there, I mean, your taste for different or, or you know, better, more modern, I should say, uh, blade steels, I mean, that might not cut it for some of you guys out there. You know, I used to say it's kind of a blade snobby thing. There's nothing wrong with 440C, and there really isn't, but it's just hard because in the 40 to $50 price range, there's better steel out there, it's just the way it is. If you're looking for a performance, if you're looking for an everyday EDC and you just want it to be able to hold an edge for a pretty good amount of time, just might not meet your standards. Um, so yeah, I mean, this one is by far my favorite. Love this thing, uh, the 105, the QS 105. So, on to this guy. Now this guy was my favorite for a while. I like this because it was small, it, I mean, by design, it's a really, really simple knife, okay? Simple little liner lock. Also, you can see, flow through design here. Um, I love the blade shape. If you notice, this one is the uh, full flat ground, okay? Sliced great, even though it's 440C. Seemed to form just a little bit better than this one, all right? If you look at the thickness, obviously, it's a, a thinner blade as well. So it was a better slicer. Seemed to hold an edge, okay. Wasn't too bad at all. You know, maybe Dexter's thumb studs here. Um, I like the pocket clip a lot more on this one, which by the way, I didn't, I don't think I showed the pocket clip on this one. This one did work totally fine. All right. Not a huge fan of the design. It's a aesthetics thing. Um, I like simple for pocket clips usually, but anyway, so yeah, pocket clip worked out totally fine. Uh, this is tip up as well as this one again, preferred by many. You can see it's only right side carry on this one. This one is swappable right or left side carry. All right, so this one I figure would be more universally liked, but, <laughs> and this is a huge but, the only reason this is not my favorite, and I'm going to go as far as saying for $21, I would not recommend it, is it created some blade play with usage, all right? You hear that? And now I didn't slam this on the ground, I didn't drop it. I didn't, um, you know, try to cut metal cans open or anything crazy. I cut cardboard. Now, mind you, I did cut a lot of cardboard. I probably cut, I don't know, 15 boxes, you know, down with this. And that's not, that's not just like cutting the sides down. I mean, I, I cut each individual panel of a box away, and then I cut each panel into four pieces. That's usually how I break down cardboard into like, you know, yay big squares, and I fill garbage packs with them. 
That's just how I get rid of my garbage. So, I mean, I could just kind of step on them and crush on them, you know, but they, they end up taking more, more room up in the garbage than actually cutting it down. Plus, it gives me a great opportunity to actually test some different blades. And just from the cardboard, before I even got into the plastic, I got a little bit of blade play. All right, which is just not cool. So uh, for twenty dollars, if it if it did not create that play, I would have been over the moon with this knife. I thought it would be really really awesome. I love everything about it except for that. Okay, the the scales are nicely textured too. Like I said, it was a real simple design. Came in a bunch of colors. All right, I like the jimpy on the back here, which again I usually don't care about stuff like that, but it just it was really nice. I loved everything about it. But I I don't do blade play. All right, side to side, that's not a big deal. Up and down. There's nothing you could do about that. There's nothing. It has to be replaced. I mean, when you have side to side play, when I say side to side, I mean like side to side, okay? Some people get confused by that. If you take your, your knife, right? You pinch the blade and you wiggle back and forth, right? That's side to side. That could be adjusted. That could be adju adjusted through your pivot screw, okay? You find that fine, um, that fine line between too tight and some slop. You know, so if your blade wiggles side to side, you could tighten it a little bit. Obviously, if you tighten it too much, it's not going to open and close properly. Um, but when you have up and down, I mean, come on, you can hear that. And up and down, again, up and down. It's if you're looking at your knife like this. Side to side, up and down. Up and down play, all that is is the, the lineup between your lock face and the base of your blade on the tank. So there's nothing you can do about that unless you could take your knife apart and start grinding and... and most, I would say 99.9% .9 of you out there, if you're not a knife maker, you're just going to screw it up and make it way worse. So, uh, yeah, there's nothing you can do about that. And that bothers me. And it's such a shame because I really, really love this knife. So, I will say this. If you are into buying $20 knives to just throw around in a drunk drawer, it'd be worth checking out. But uh, not, not for EDC. It's just that, unfortunately, that is unacceptable to me. Um, this one was my favorite. This one's still kicking just fine. I might actually carry this a little bit more, even though I'm doing the video now on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, these are fine. It's just this one, again, for the $40 to $50 price range, 440C is not quite cutting it these days anymore. That's why the D2 on this one, I, I feel, is totally acceptable for that price. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's my overall opinion on the QSP. I would put them in quality range of like CRKT, maybe some of the older Gerbers, um, SOG, you know, it's kind of like that. It's not, it's really not bad at all. It's pretty decent. Um, the, the play on this is, is very unacceptable, but I've had play in certain knives from all different companies. So it's not necessarily a hit on the company. It's just that particular knife. And again, this could be hit and miss too. When you're talking about cheaper knives, sometimes the quality control isn't all there. You know, you may get one of these knives and it never has play. Who knows? You're stabbing into things and doing all kinds of cutting and it never has an issue. Maybe I got a lemon. I don't really know. But I can only go by what I've personally used. Um, so yeah, the 105, awesome. The 101, just kind of chunky, bulky, ugly clip, uncomfortable to rest my finger there. Overall, I mean, you got a lot of knife in your hand. It's not terribly uncomfortable but that specific thing bothers me i don't like that if in fact if this was closed if this um spacer here went all the way up to the top it wouldn't be a big deal because down here it feels fine but just i don't there's something about it just really stood out to me it's just being like ugh, I, I don't like it um but yeah so those are my opinions on it if you've had a qsp knife let me know which one you've had and what you think of it total winner totally worth it this was such a letdown um, but still kind of on the fence of like, yeah, it's not, not bad for 20 bucks. I mean, there are some better knives out there for $20, but not that many. So, uh, yeah, I still like it kind of, but, but that one's kind of let down. I will say that, you know, for all the guys out there that really love their like San Ren Mew knives and the, that type, you know, of quality for cost range, you know, if you're one of those people, you may be interested in this. I do think they're a little bit above that as far as the overall features and quality. Um, again, like CRKT range where they're just affordable knives that, you know, they won't blow you away. They won't be super impressive, but they're very usable knives. I mean, even with this little bit of play, I could still carry and use this. It's just as a knife guy, it bugs me a little bit. You know what I mean? But the average person would, would never know or never care. They wouldn't be sitting there scrutinizing the knife and going, oh, 
What's that wiggle? They wouldn't think anything of it. Unless the blade fell off, they'd keep opening it and using it. It still locks up. It just has that little bit of play. So it's just, uh, you know, us knife people, we know that play's not supposed to be there. And we know that play wasn't there, mind you, uh, when I first had this. It was literally created from the pressure in cutting. All right? It deformed the liner lock. So the liners are not properly heat treated. That's really what it comes down to, uh, if they even are heat treated. So anyway, that is that. If you have opinions on this brand, post them in the comments, post your experience so other people can read your experiences and not just go by what I'm saying. Uh, you know, I love to be a reference when I do knife reviews. I love that I'll be able to give people's opinions and it'll help them, but you shouldn't solely just go on what I say. Get a lot of opinions from a lot of people and then spend your hard earned dollars, you know, how you want to do it. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Take care.